back to the last of the spooky lunch with Goosebumps. Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns by R.L. Stein. Chapter 26. Ooh! A low cry escaped Walker's throat. Lee jumped off the porch. I stared at the creature in the yellow porch light. A woman. A woman with a grinning jack-o'-lantern head. Trick or treat, she asked, turning her jagged smile on us. Orange flames danced and flickered inside her head. Uh, uh, uh. Walker hopped off the porch and stumbled into Lee. I stared at the grinning pumpkin head. This is a nightmare, I told myself. A living nightmare. The woman dropped some kind of candy into my bag. I didn't even see what it was. I couldn't take my eyes off her pumpkin head. Are you? I started to ask. But she closed the front door before I could get the words out. More houses, the pumpkin heads commanded. More trick-or-treating. We dragged ourselves to the next little house. The door swung open as we climbed onto the front stoop. And we stared at another pumpkin head creature. This one wore jeans and a maroon sweatshirt. The flames hissed and crackled behind his eyes and mouth. Two wide, crooked teeth were carved into his mouth, one on top, one below, giving him a silly expression. But my friends and I were too terrified to laugh. At the next house, we were greeted by two jack-o'-lantern creatures. We crossed the street and found another fiery-headed creature waiting for us at the next house. Where are we, I wondered. What is this strange neighborhood? The two pumpkin heads forced us onto the next block. The house here all had jack-o'-lantern creatures living in them. At the end of the block, Tabby set down her trick-or-treat bag and turned to face the pumpkin heads. Please, let us stop, she begged. Please, we can't do any more houses, Lee exclaimed weakly. I, I'm so tired and I really feel sick. Please, Walker pleaded, please. I can't do another house. I really can't, Tabby said, shaking her head. I'm so frightened. Those creatures in every house, she uttered a sob and her voice trailed off. Lee crossed his arms over the front of his striped costume. I'm not taking another step, he insisted. I don't care what you do. I'm not moving. Me either, Tabby agreed, stepping close beside him. The two pumpkin heads didn't reply. Instead, they rose up high in the air. I took a step back as their triangle eyes bulged wide and their mouths stretched open. Bright orange flames flew from their eyes and then their mouths stretched even wider and they both let out high wails. The shrill sound rose and fell through the heavy night air. Rose and fell like police sirens. The pumpkin heads tilted back until their flame shot straight up to the sky and their siren wails grew louder, louder, until I had to hold my hands over my ear. Saw a flash of light and turned to see another pumpkin head floating toward us from across the street. Oh, I uttered a hoarse cry as two more pumpkin head creatures hurried out of their houses and then two more and another creature and another all down the block doors flew open creatures floated out floated toward us hissing and wailing flickering dancing flames shot out from their jack-o'-lantern eyes and mouths sending orange light into the black sky they floated and bobbed down the street across the dark lawns wailing like sirens 
hissing like snakes closer, closer. Dozens of them, dozens and dozens. Walker, Tabby, Lee, and I pressed close together in the middle of the street as the pumpkin head creatures drew near. They formed a circle around us, a circle of grinning, fiery jack-o'-lantern faces over dark, robed bodies. The circles of creatures spun around us slowly, and as they spun, their heads bobbed and tilted on their shoulders. Slowly, slowly, they spun around us, and then they began to chant in their hoarse, crackly voices, trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat. What do they want? Tabby cried. What are they going to do? I didn't have a chance to answer her. Four creatures stepped quickly into the middle of the circle. And when I saw what they carried in their hands, I started to scream. Ah! After 27, trick or treat. Trick or treat, trick or treat. My scream drowned out the chanting pumpkin heads. And as the four creatures stepped forward, the chanting stopped. Their jack-o'-lantern heads bobbed on their shoulders. Their ragged smiles grew wider as they came near. They held their hands waist high. In their hands, they each held a pumpkin head, four extra pumpkin heads. Oh no, Lee cried out when he saw them. Tabby grabbed Lee's arm in terror. What are they gonna do with those heads? Bright yellow flames flickered from the eyes and grinning mouths of the four extra heads. These are for you, a pumpkin head announced in a voice that sounded like sharp pieces of gravel been rubbed together. Oh, a low moan escaped, escaped my throat. I stared at the empty heads, stared at their fiery eyes, their ugly grins. These are for you, the pumpkin head repeated, stepping closer. These will be your new heads. No, you can't, you can't, Tabby screamed. You her cry was cut off as one of the creatures raised a pumpkin head over her. It had a hole cut in the bottom. The creature slammed the pumpkin head over Tabby's head. Lee tried to run, but a creature moved quickly to block his way and then slammed a pumpkin head onto Lee's head. I stumbled back, my mouth open in amazement hands pressed helplessly against the sides of their pumpkin heads. Tabby and Lee ran down the street, ran blindly, ran screaming, screaming into the darkness. And then the creatures turned to Walker and me and raised the empty pumpkin heads high. Please, I beg, please, no. Chapter 28, please, I cried, please don't give me a pumpkin head, please, Walker joined in, and then we both burst out laughing. <laughs> the two creatures set the empty pumpkin heads down on the ground, and then their own pumpkin heads started to change. The flames died out. The heads began to shrink and change shape. A few seconds later, Shane and Shanna had their own heads back. And then all four of us started to laugh. We hugged each other and spun around. We danced wildly, crazily up and down the street. We tossed back our heads and laughed at the moon and stars. <laughs> laughed till it hurt. It worked, guys, I exclaimed when we finally stopped celebrating. It worked. It worked. We really scared Tabby and Lee this time. They'll be scared for the rest of their lives, Walker declared. He slapped Shane on the back. Then he danced another happy dance, waving his hands gleefully above his head. 
We did it. We did it. I chanted joyfully. We really scared them. We finally scared them. That was so much fun, Walker exclaimed, and so easy. I stepped up to Shane and Shannon and hugged them both. Of course, I exclaimed, it helps to have two aliens from another planet as friends. Chapter 29. Whoa, take it easy, Shane warned. Lowering his voice, he glanced around nervously. We don't want any strangers to know that we're not from Earth, Shanna said. I know, I know, I replied. That's why we didn't use your weird powers to scare Tabby and Lee before. This year, we were desperate, Walker declared. But we've got to be very careful, Shanna said. Shane rose up and turned to all the other pumpkin head creatures who still circled us. Thanks for your help, brothers and sisters, Shane called to them. You better hurry home before anyone sees that we have invaded this whole neighborhood. Waving and laughing, murmuring happily to each other, the other pumpkin heads hurried back to their houses. In a few seconds, the street stood empty again except for us four friends. We started walking down the middle of the street, making our way home. Walker and I dragged our heavy trick-or-treat bags beside us. Walker turned to Shane and Shanna. A smile spread over his face. When do you think Tammy and Lee will discover they can just pull off their pumpkin heads? Walker asked. Maybe never, Shanna replied. And we all started laughing all over again. <laughs> we didn't stop until we reached the bottom of my driveway. Thanks again, I told Shane and Shanna. You guys were great. You were greater than great. You were awesome, Walker declared. A couple of times you even scared me. And I knew it was you. And do you know what else is great about having aliens for, from another planet as friends? I said, you two don't eat candy. That's right, Shane and Shanna agreed. That means Walker and I get to keep it all, I exclaimed laughing. I suddenly had a serious thought. I stopped laughing. You know, I've never seen you two eat, I told the two aliens. What do you eat? Shanna reached out and pinched my arm. You're still really bony, Drew, she replied. You'll find out what Shane and I eat when you feel out a bit. Yeah, Shane chimed in. People from your planet only like to eat very large adults, so you don't have to worry for now. My mouth dropped open. Hey, you're kidding, right? I demanded. Shane, Shanna, you're not serious, right? That's a joke, right? Right? And that, my friend, is the end. If you see a jack-o'-lantern, remember, put one head in front of the other. <laughs>